couple of years ago, I saw these cute gnomes online and I wanted to make them myself. So I cut some wood out into triangles. I stained the middle of them and then I taped it off and painted the top and the bottom all the different colors that I wanted. After the paint dried and I took the tape off, I cut out a beard from fur foam and I hot glued it onto the gnome. I also hot glued fur on for a mustache and for eyebrows and I put a cute little nose on that I also stained. They turned out so cute and they were so easy and they still come out with our Christmas decorations every year. We just finished making this melting snowman, but obviously he needs a friend. These snowmen were surprisingly easy to make, but I did use a lot of spray foam. For the melting snowman, I used a laundry basket from the Dollar Tree and styrofoam for the head. For the big snowman, I used a blow-up ball and propped it up on a bucket and then covered it in spray foam. After the base of the snowman was dry, I added some lights and then I blew up another ball that was a little bit smaller. I stuck the second ball on top of the base and covered that in spray foam as well. I was very nervous that this would fall over while it was drying, but luckily it did not. After this was dry, I took it off the bucket and I removed the blow-up balls. Then I added more spray foam around the base for stability, and of course, more lights and a styrofoam head just like the melted snowman. I got more branches for my backyard for the arms, and then added a face and a cute little hat. The foam was a little yellow, so I did paint it white, and I added artificial snow to make it look like real snow. And look how cute these snowmen turn out. And can you notice this little detail for the melting snowman? It all makes sense now. I love how this turned out. Follow along for more fun DIY. Let me show you how I made a melting snowman that doesn't melt. This project was so fun, and it's actually not that hard to do. I got a laundry basket from the Dollar Tree and white string lights and then I covered everything in this spray foam. Once the foam was dry, it was time to make the head. I used these half rounds and put them together to make the snowman's head. I used a spray foam to attach the head and then covered it all in the foam. The spray foam is a little yellow and so I painted everything white. After the paint was dry, I used a spray adhesive and this artificial snow to make it look more like real snow. Also, to keep the snow in place, I used this frosted glass spray paint. I got a kit off of Amazon to make the snowman's face, and I just pushed everything into the styrofoam. After that was finished, I decided to use a different mouth than was shown here, but I also added arms. I cut some branches off the trees in my backyard and stuck them into the sides. And you guys, how cute is this? I love how this turned out. I think it's so fun and it won't actually melt and it's a great yard decoration. I also think my one-year-old just found her new favorite friend. Follow along for more fun DIY like this. Watch and be amazed. Did you know you can DIY something like this? I created these raised planter beds over the summer and it was the best decision. I hated how sloped our front yard was and I wanted something to make it a little more interesting. I honestly didn't consider hiring someone to do it because I knew that it would cost way more than I wanted to spend. All I used was cinder blocks, rebar, rocks, and mortar to put this all together. Then I covered it all in stucco and painted it black. I mean, I'm not gonna say it was easy, but it was definitely worth it. I added plants to it in the summertime and I loved how it looked, but now that it's winter, these planters were looking a little sad. So I added a bunch of these trees into the planters. The ground was frozen, so it was a little hard to put them in, but can you believe that these are fake? I put these trees in with real dirt, which makes it look even more realistic. I mean, I don't know how they do it, but these look so real. I also added these cute gingerbread men, which I spray painted brown and added caulk for frosting. I also added solar twinkling lights. Look how cute this is. I love how this turned out. These planters are so fun to decorate, totally worth all of the work. Follow along for more DIY. Stop scrolling and save this recipe. If you're like me and you hate hard, thin sugar cookies, this recipe is for you. Pay no attention to the fact that I'm not a professional cookie decorator. What matters more is how good these cookies taste. The recipe is super simple with not that many ingredients and it can be made very quickly. It also makes a big batch so you can save some for later. And trust me, you're gonna want more later. It's mostly just dump everything in, mix it up, and then stick it in the fridge to chill for an hour. I mostly do this for the memories. My kids love decorating cookies, but then I end up eating way too many and I feel so sick. Anyone else? Technically speaking, you can roll these out as thin or thick as you want. I like them a little more thick. They don't take that long to cook in the oven, which is so nice. I like to make homemade frosting whenever I have time. It just tastes so much better than the store-bought frosting. And I also feel like because I grew up in a home where everything was homemade, I'm ruined. Okay, but taste testing is necessary. And let's be honest, cookie decorating wouldn't be as much fun if all the frosting was in different colors. So save this recipe and have so much fun making memories, decorating, and eating cookies with your family.